All right, so next concept that we have is underlay and overlay. We will use the term underlay overlay a lot in our SDA network. So let's clear what is underlay, what is overlay. To understand this, consider this diagram. So here in this diagram, we have few devices. We have this access layer device, access layer switch one, access layer switch two, access layer switch three, access layer switch four. Maybe uh, these these could be in a single building. This could be in a different building. This could be a different building. But uh, consider these these are all the access layer devices. These are two distribution layer devices. We have aggregated the access layer devices into the distribution layer. Here also we have one distribution layer device and all the distribution layer devices are aggregated at the core. This is core layer switch one and core layer switch two. Now in a typical environment, this is this is what you will see that a network is going to consist of these three uh, layers, these three, you can say access layer, distribution layer and the core layer. Access layer is where the end users are connected. Distribution layer is the aggregation point for the access layer devices. And the core layer is where the distribution devices are aggregated. Now, let's say there are two users in this access layer at this access layer is on this switch number one. Let's say there are two users. One user is in VLAN 10 and the other user is in VLAN 20. I'll just wait a minute now. Okay. So there is a user in VLAN 10 and this is a user in VLAN 20. Now, in the second floor, this is the first floor of the company. Let's consider this as the first floor. This is the second floor. This is the third floor and this is the fourth floor. So on the second floor also, there is a user in the same VLAN 10 and the same VLAN 20. Like here in the third floor, there is a user in VLAN 10. There is a user in VLAN 20. On the fourth floor also, user 10, 20. This is the second building, first floor, second building, second floor. So we have users in VLAN 10, 20. Now our requirement is, that the user must be able to communicate like VLAN 10 user must be able to communicate with VLAN 10 and 20 must be able to communicate with VLAN 20. So, you know, one VLAN is equal to one broadcast domain. We already know it from the basic studies that one VLAN equal to one broadcast domain. So as soon as we created multiple broadcast domains here, we created multiple VLAN means like we created multiple broadcast domains here. Now, what I want to do, I want to extend my this VLAN 10 broadcast domain all the way up to second floor, third floor, fourth floor, and then onto the second building as well. Second building, first floor, and second floor. So what we can do is that we can extend the broadcast domain of VLAN 10 over these links using this concept of trunk. We can configure these links at the trunk link. These trunk links can now forward the traffic for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 on all the like second floor, third floor, fourth floor, and then this could be a layer three network. This could be the aggregation point for the layer three and layer two. So the traffic can from here, it can go to the distribution layer from the distribution layer, it can go to the, uh, it can go to the core layer. And from the core layer, it can go to the distribution layer. Basically it could be routed here. Routing will take place. So packet that will arrive on this distribution layer switch one will be routed towards the core layer switch. And then from core layer switch, it will be routed to the second flow, second building, the distribution layer and from there it can go to the VLAN like using the trunk it can go to the VLAN 10 and 20 respectively. So the one way to uh, extend the VLAN from one switch to other switch over this network is by using this thing called trunk. This is how the traditional networks are built in typical cases. Now there are a lot of challenges in uh, this is a layer 2 bound network this is a layer 3 network here we are using routing and here we are using switching. Now the challenge that you will face here, one of the challenges that you will face here is that we here we are running, we have connected like multiple cables, like from this access layer switch one to distribution layer switch, we have one cable, we could have multiple cables here as well. So as you can see here, since we are running, we have connected these switches via multiple cables, protocols such as HTTP, VTP, DTP, these protocols will start running as well. They will create some overhead traffic, but these protocols are necessary so that, for example, like STP, uh, STP is necessary because layer two loops, they do not occur. Fine. This is how the traditional network is built. When we talk about the software defined network, this is not exactly the same. In the software defined networking, 
this entire campus fabric is based on layer 3. So up to this point, like everything is going to be on layer 3. Like this all is layer 3. Routing is running. Here we still have VLAN 10, VLAN 20, 10, 20, same thing. We have VLAN 10, VLAN 20 on all these devices, access layer switches. Let's still call them access layer switches. But now the challenge is if it all is layer 3, how we are going to extend our VLAN 10 broadcast zone from here to here? How we can our, how we can extend our VLAN 20 broadcast domain from one building to the other building? Fine. So since in a software defined approach to manage the LAN infrastructure, this entire network is layer three, just and just using the trunks and everything is not going to work. We cannot use trunking in this case to extend that uh, or stretch that VLAN from one switch to the other switch. We need some other technique so that we can extend or we can stretch the VLAN 10 of this switch all the way up to maybe from up from here to here. I want to send the traffic from this machine to this machine in the same VLAN over this layer 3 network. Fine. This, this is one of the example. This is one of the example. How we are going to achieve this? We are going to introduce something called overlay in this topology. Now this infrastructure that you see, this infrastructure that you see, this cable, uh, such as all these devices that you have connected, this all is going to serve as something called underlay. Underlay is the underlying physical infrastructure on the top of which overlay is built. Overlay is a complete logical network. Overlay is a, it is a logical network built on the top of the underlay. What we can do is that we can create some sort of tunnels. Overlay uses this concept of tunnels. We can build a tunnel from switch one all the way to this uh, second building, first floor switch one, and I can send my traffic over that tunnel, which is built on the top of that uh, underlay layer three network. So underlay is a logical network built on the top of the, oh, uh, sorry, underlay, overlay is the, overlay is the logical network that is built on the top of underlay. Underlay is the physical infrastructure that serves the overlay. On, under the, this underlay network, we will have like these different, different switches. We have the physical connectivity. We do have some uh, protocols running. We might run any protocol here, like we might run OSPF routing protocol. In SDA, it is preferred to run ISIS protocol. They, they, they say that you run ISIS protocol. Okay, this is one of the example that you can take. Another example of the underlay and overlay you can uh, think of. Let us consider again a similar scenario. Let's say we have a few routers here. And we have our LAN subnet here, which is 192.168.10.1. Here we have our LAN subnet here, 192.168.20.1. Now this, this infrastructure is not in a, not under our control. Like this infrastructure is not under our control. You can consider it as some sort of service provider network. This is one device in Delhi location. This is one of the device in let's say Mumbai location. We have taken the connectivity from one of the service providers. So I do have connection. I do have the connection. I do have the reachability from this point to this point. Now what I want to do, I want to send my traffic from 192.168.10.1 to 192.168.20.1. But I cannot just simply do the routing because first of all, this is a private subnet or the private subnet, uh, private subnets are not allowed on the public transport such as, it could be any transport such as internet. And if consider yourself a customer, if just like you, if this service provider has like uh, uh, 1000 customers and every customer starts advertising the route, in that case, you will see that these routers will, will have to maintain like a lot of routing information. So provider will say, no, I'm not going to allow you to advertise any route. I want the reachability from 192.168.10.1 to 20.1. 
but I do not want to advertise these destination information into the protocol that we are running. Why? So that this service provider don't need to maintain all those routes in its routing table. And uh, of course, I don't want to add any sort of overhead on these core routers as well. So what we can do, we can again take we, this, this in, we already have the reachability from my Delhi to Mumbai location device. So what we can do, since we have the reachability from this point to this point, this entire network can serve as an underlay. And I can build a logical network on the top of this underlay. I can build a tunnel from one point to the other point. And I can send my entire traffic over this logical tunnel that I just built from Delhi location to this Mumbai location. It could be any any protocol we can use to build this tunnel. There are very popular protocols such as GRE we can use to build a tunnel. GRE generic routing encapsulation is one of the protocol that we can uh, use to build these tunnels. And then we can do the routing. And then we can send the traffic from 192.168.10.1 to 20.1. It would look like that the traffic came from 192.168.10.1 to this router. And from the router, it uh, was sent via that tunnel all the way to the router number two. And from there, it went to the LAN destination. It would look like the traffic is going directly from this router to this router. However, the traffic actually is passing via that underlay. Now, how these devices are not going to identify, how these devices are not going to identify, how these devices are not going to know that the traffic is passing from 192.168.10.1 to 20.1 because whenever we pass the traffic over any sort of tunnel some extra encapsulation takes place some extra encapsulation is going to take place that is extra encapsulation will be done by in this case gre itself when we talk about the sda we use that something called VXLAN concept, virtual extensible local area network to do that uh, extra encapsulation on the data passing from one device to the other device over that underlay. So the tunnel that is built in here, it is based on VXLAN. The tunnel here that we have built, it is based on GR. What is going to happen when this device sends the traffic? This device will create, let's say, this device creates an ICMP packet. In that ICMP packet, it is going to add uh, some sort of IP header. That IP header will have the source IP as 192.168.10.1, the destination IP as 192.168.20.1. Then over that IP packet, since the packet has to go via GRE, GRE is going to add its own header and then it will add a new IP header and that IP header will have a new source IP, which is this IP address, tunnel source. We define it in the configuration. We define it in the configuration. Okay. We define it when we do the configuration of GRE. So this IP address, let's call that 1.1.1.1. So this IP address 1.1.1.1 will be the source IP. And this IP address right here is going to be the destination IP, which is 4.4.4. .4 so now, and then again, the ethernet header and ethernet trailer will be added. So when the packet now arrives, on this service provider router, it would look like that the packet is going from 1.1.1 to 4.4.4, which are public destinations and this service provider router can forward the packet from this interface to this interface. This router is going to take a look at the routing table and again, it is going to forward the packet towards 4.4.4 here. Then this router is going to decapsulate that packet and it will come to know that, oh, it is a it is a GRE packet. So I have to take a look at the uh, destination IP address inside the IP header. And then the packet will be forwarded towards the correct destination. So even though the packet is traveling from the actual underlay, it looks like the traffic is going from the endpoint to endpoint directly because of that extra encapsulation that is happening. Fine. This is again one more example. This is very beneficial. Similar to that, we do have a services such as MPLS. We can have this MPLS uh, service provider network where here we have a router. We have taken the service from the service uh, like MPLS service provider. They have given us a connection. 
I can give all my routes information. I can give all of my routes information to provider router. And this provider router is going to send all that route information to the other side. We call that provider as two. From there, it can go to my second location. So logically, I can exchange the route from one point to the other point. And in between all these routers, they do not need to know the uh, destinations. They do not need to maintain the information about all these routes that I have just exchanged. BGP protocols such as BGP can easily do this task of exchanging the route from one provider is router to the other provider is router. So whenever the packet arrives here, it will look like the packet has to go from this router to this router directly. And uh, MPLS is going to perform the encapsulation again, like uh, labels and everything is going to be added over the data. And based on that extra information that is added, the packet will go from this router to this router and then all the way through the MPLS cloud to the exact destination. So underlay, underlay is the underlying infrastructure on the top of which overlay is built. Overlay is a logical network which is built in between these between any two devices where we have the reachability. So how we are going to form the reachability from this device to this device? We will have these links configured as the layer three link. Now, as soon as we configure these links as layer three link, we will not have any requirement of protocols, layer two protocols such as STP, DTP. These protocols we would not require because these are purely now the layer three links. We will do the routing and the routing to make these switches reachable to each other will be done based on protocols such as OSPF or ISIS. Cisco recommends that in SDS solution we use ISIS, not OSPF. And once the reachability is there, uh, a logical tunnel can be set up based on technology such as VXLAN. A logical tunnel can be set up when we have to forward the data from one point to the other point. In that way, we can users can be on the same VLAN, like VLAN 10, VLAN 10, no matter how many number of switches are there in between, and we don't have to stress the VLANs on these switches. They are not even aware that those VLANs exist. These are pure layer three devices. This is what we can achieve in software defined networking under the SD. When it comes to SD WAN, although it is not our curriculum, in SD WAN, this thing is done using IPsec. As soon as one Vanage router comes to know about the other Vanage router, it automatically performs, it automatically forms some sort of IPsec tunnel, and within the protection of that IPsec tunnel, it exchanges all the data. So there are also some sort of tunnels are used to exchange the data from a whatever type of transport network it could be. Like we can, we can have here, we can have internet as a transport network. We can have MPLS as a transport network. We can have 4G LTE as a transport network, no matter what transport it is. Till this, these IPs are reachable, we can form a logical tunnel between them. Your physical network will look like this, but your logical topology will look like something else. It would look like that those, you, those two devices are directly connected and we can send the data from 10 to 10 and 20 to 20. So underlay consists of these devices, wiring, cabling and everything. Underlay is the infrastructure and overlay is the logical tunnel that is built on the top of underlay. I hope you understand this concept of underlay and overlay. 